My name is Dmitry. Um, I'm a web designer and developer. Uh, I make a living creating custom themes and plugins for my clients. Um, I also recently released a public theme uh, that is called Maker, which is a very basic portfolio theme that you can now download from uh, official theme repository. Um, I was really amazed how uh, uh, the community reacted on it. I'm still getting these emails that uh, people like it and stuff. So uh, this is exciting. Um, and today I'd like to talk to you about uh, really basic typography rules that uh, will help you create better, uh, make better typography decisions if you are just starting uh, designing and creating themes. So um, let's get started. Um, Rule number one, uh, a line length or column width or measure, which is basically the same thing, uh, should be somewhere around 45 to 75 characters per line, including uh, uh, spaces and punctuation marks. Um, um, but as with any rule, there are some exceptions. So. Uh, Narrow columns from uh, like 35 to 55 characters per line can be also good. Think uh, a homepage of a news website like New York Times, for example. Um, you see that all columns here are reasonably narrow and uh, it looks really good. Um, wider columns up to 90 characters per line can uh, also work for continuous reading and the inner page of the same website illustrates it. So. Uh, the column width is set to uh, 85 characters per line here, and it still looks good, and it's uh, easy to read this text. So uh, rule number two, use flush left text alignment, or I could also put it like, don't use justified text alignment. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know that. <laughs> um, well. Um, why is that? Why can't we use justified text alignment like in books and magazines? Um, simply because we don't have uh, tools for that just yet. Um, let me explain that. Uh, software like InDesign that we use uh, for creating printed media uh, can not only add hypernation to uh, the text, but also adjust word and letter spacing to balance the spaces between words when we justify text. And in CSS, we have just hypernation, and it still doesn't work in all browsers yet um, and on all devices. So um, yeah, uh, this paragraph was uh, justified and in InDesign. And this is how it would look like if it was justified in just CSS. So you see that the spaces are too big, and now we have two hypernations instead of one. So you see there's one here and two here, and it really doesn't look that good and professional. So the best thing to do is to set text alignment property to left and uh, enable hypernation so uh, the right edge of the paragraph won't look too ragged and we won't have rivers of white between words. Okay, um, rule number three, line height. You should have, uh, you should set appropriate line height. It's really important. It can literally make or break your design. Um, it defines the amount of space that goes above and below the single line of text. And uh, it's a good practice to set line height in scalable units like M's or even with uh, just numeric values without units at all. So. And as a rule of thumb, the, the best line height for a body text should be uh, set to somewhere around 1.5 and for uh, headings to 1.2. Uh, of course, these values are approximate and can differ for different typefaces, but they really should stay in that range. Um, this is an example of a poorly set line height. It's set to 1.1 or something like that here. Um, you see that lines are too close to each other and here it's set to uh, 2.5. It's also not really good. Uh, in both cases, um, it's not comfortable to read this text. And this is uh, the example of a perfectly set line height. It's 1.5 with Helvetica and, and stuff. OK. Um, as we've covered line height, we can now go to the next rule, which is uh, follow the vertical rhythm. Uh, if you hear this term for the first time, it may sound a little confusing because uh, what kind of rhythm is that and why it's vertical? But it, it really is very simple. Uh, uh, 
Simply speaking, this means that all elements on the page, uh, the height of all elements on the page, the top and bottom margins, uh, should relate to the line height of a body text uh, in some meaningful way. So uh, let me illustrate it with, it, with this example. Um, we have two paragraphs here and a subheading between them. So uh, let's draw a grid where the distance between each lines, each line will be equal to the line height of a body text. We can see now that the bottom margin of the first paragraph and the bottom margin of the subheading is uh, equal to the line height of a body text. And we can double that margin, or we can even split it asymmetrically. But the main thing here is to make sure that the text goes back to the grid after that margin. Simple as that. And you can apply this principle to almost uh, any element on the page. Um, OK. If you ever design something, uh, you have probably asked yourself a question, at what sizes should I set my type? Well, modular scale can make this decision easier. Um, you have all probably heard of golden ratio, which can be found in architecture, in proportions of human body, in proportions of plants, and many other things. So uh, we can simply take values from this scale with the base of 16 and apply them to our CSS, to the sizes of our headings and other elements uh, like this. But uh, it may work, but uh, it looks too extreme, right? Nobody said, uh, probably the H1 is too big and we don't set, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. And we don't set the font sizes in pixels nowadays. We use M's uh, or REM's. So uh, in this case, we, uh, yeah, it's too big, right. In this case, we should probably combine scales. We can uh, use multiple scales for one CSS file. And tools like modularscale.com uh, can help us do that automatically. So we choose uh, uh, two, three, or as many scales as you like. It probably should be two. Uh, choose a base for a scale and uh, it will give you uh, values that you can put to your CSS that looks more meaningful, that look more meaningful. All right, uh, rule number six, choose uh, typefaces wisely. Um, I mean, uh, this question, choosing the typeface, is very complex, and uh, I bet someone could dedicate a whole talk to it. But uh, I can still point, uh, outline some important things that could at least point you in the right direction when you choose a typeface for a theme. Uh, and the first is you should uh, choose a readable typeface for a body text. Um, you don't want to put any fancy typeface like lobster as a body text, obviously. Um, you also need to uh, choose a good complementary type, typeface uh, for the body text. It may uh, be, like I said, a typeface, or it can be a different font family, or it may be uh, a different weight of the same typeface, but it, they should really uh, work together well. Um, another thing to consider is the weight, the size of the font file in kilobytes, because we all like uh, fast-loading websites. And uh, you want to make sure that you don't load unnecessary weights and unnecessary language subsets. And speaking about subsets, if you're uh, designing a public theme, you should probably consider choosing a typeface that, has, uh, that supports different languages, like uh, Russian or uh, Chinese or any other language. So. Uh, this is it about typefaces, and we are now at rule number seven, which is, uh, which in my uh, opinion is the most important, and it goes like this. Break the rules. Uh, yeah, break the rules when you think uh, it's appropriate, when you think it benefits the design, uh, because only by breaking rules we can create something new, something that was never created before. So, uh, but uh, we all know that to break rules we must first know them, so learn typography, break rules, and create beautiful themes. Thank you.